Redditors, have you ever gotten an ick from a potential partner or love interest that instantly killed your attraction to them? If so, what happened? Talking about our interests, and after I listened to him blab about his lawnscaping business, I went to talk about my interests, and he interrupted me to say, Wow, you really have nothing interesting to say, do you? The amount of time he spent plotting revenge, usually against his parents or ex-wife, should have been spent introspectively and on getting his life back on track. We broke up shortly thereafter. Then we tried to reconcile. Then he smoked meth in front of me, and that was the end of that. Grabbed me by the face on the first date, stroked under my eyes and said, You need to take better care of yourself. Sir, I'm a divorced 37 years old with kids, and those under-eye circles were passed down from my grandmother, their family heirlooms. And get your hands off my face, we just met. And this is not a Nicholas Sparks movie. My ex always wanted to do Airbnb getaways, but she would always suggest places that are literally mansions, and she expected me to pay for it myself. I argued against some of these places because they were too damn expensive. And she mentioned that her exes made almost as much as me, and they would book these Airbnbs no problem. I never told her at this point how much I made, and that turned me off her completely with that statement. Had a guy once whose car smelled so bad I had to try not to throw up while sticking my head out the window. He couldn't smell it. I thought I was going to die. Turns out he forgot about a double cheeseburger in the back of his car for over two weeks in the hot sun. I don't know what bothered me more. The smell or the fact that it didn't bother him. Literally every single problem she had was someone else's fault. Even when there was proof it was her fault, she would argue non-stop that it was someone else's. She got in a car wreck and called insurance over and over again to tell them that it was the other person's fault. They checked the computer in her car because it saved her speed. She was going right before the wreck. It told them everything they needed to know and she still denied it. I met a woman on Tinder a few years back and we hit it off really well. About a week after we had met, she deleted me and blocked me on all forms of social media with little to no explanation. I was texting her on my iPhone and after she sent one last text, it went from iMessage blue to regular text green. After that, I messaged her again a few hours later and heard nothing. I checked my Snapchat, Facebook and Instagram and couldn't find her anywhere. I panicked because I thought I had genuinely connected with her. But after a day or two, I calmed down and thought, if this is some kind of a test, I am out. Fuck this high school bullshit. So I fired up Bumble and Tinder again and matched with someone on Bumble who showed genuine interest in me and started an awesome conversation. The next morning, I got a text from the original woman and she literally said, I see you're back on Tinder. I made a fake account to see if you would get back on. And sure enough, there you are. I laughed to myself because I knew immediately I had dodged a massive bullet. I responded, essentially saying, Well, you blocked me on all social media and my number. How was I supposed to know you'd reach out? She literally said, It was supposed to be a test of your loyalty, and you failed. I can never be with someone who would start talking to other women immediately after something so trivial. I responded saying, All right, sounds good. Have a good one. Then blocked her myself. Oh, and the woman I began talking to on Bumble immediately after the first one blocked me? We will be celebrating three years of marriage and five years total together this upcoming September. I went from a batshit crazy woman to the most wonderful person I've ever met in my life. Talk about an upgrade. He bullied someone in front of me. Instant disgust. Found out the reason he rented the house next door to his parents was so his mom would make his meals, wash his clothes, etc. Had the audacity to say, let me call my mom, when I mentioned I was a little hungry. She constantly thought everyone wanted to fuck her all the time, even strangers. Realized he was faking seizures our entire relationship to get out of helping me do chores, cook meals. At first I was interested in her because she seemed really cool and funny, but then it became apparent that literally everything out of her mouth was le cool and funny. It was impossible to have a real conversation, even a casual one. Instead, it was constant arrested development lines and sarcasm. She replaced the word dollars with doll hairs, which I chuckled at the first time, but she said it every time, like she was trying to earn Reddit karma in real life conversations. Drove me nuts. 
In college, I was seeing a girl who lived in student residence with me, but on another floor. She would always talk about how another guy, Tom, on her floor was obsessed with her and would show me texts between them. She said she only talked to him because he's harmless and that they're friends. I never met him. After a week, her ex-friend from high school pulled me aside and told me not to trust her. She said that the girl I was seeing is a notorious liar and that Tom doesn't exist. That she added her own number in her phone as Tom would text herself and then delete the sent messages. The only reason her ex-friend knew is because she saw the text message exchange happen in the reflection of a mirror when they were in the same room. I was close with front desk and asked if they could look up the names from that floor. They said yes and told me that there was no guy named Tom on her floor. I noped out of that real quick. She was best friends with another girl who she constantly spoke shit about when said friend wasn't around. He asked me if I could avoid showers before we met. I can avoid you is what I can do. First, red flag, he wanted me to drive because he had an interlock. Second, he talked about biting the ear of his ex's new boyfriend. Third was the jugs of urine scattered in his living room. There was no second date. My brief girlfriend bought me some hair care products before she came over because it was right by her house. In return, I said I would go grocery shopping and make her a nice dinner. I thought this to be an even exchange. That night, I found her looking through my trash for the receipt for the groceries to make sure that the $30 she spent on me was equal to the amount I spent on her dinner. Dated a guy who seemed chill, but kept talking about social media and how people, exes, were scheming against him. I believed him at first, until it got to a point where he thought things like a photo someone put up was an indicator that they were getting him back. When these people were literally just doing normal things and posting normal stuff. I think he was schizophrenic, but it was really unsettling. Months later, he rang me out of the blue to ask me about a link between his ex, myself, and a friend. The link was butterflies, and because of this link, he thought we were conspiring against him. Making assumptions about me on the first day, I suppose someone like you, or a girl like you wouldn't understand. I am literally right here. Ask me. Don't tell me what my life is or is like. Anyway, eventually I got up and left. They messaged me what my problem is. So I wrote back something to the effect of, a boy like you wouldn't understand even if I told you. She started to set up the relationship in a way that made me her emotional punching bag to where I was to blame for any bad feelings she had. Nothing I could do or say in those moments could ever help the situation because that wasn't my purpose in her life. I was the distraction from her own issues she refused to acknowledge. Her extreme moods weren't because of her or her past, but it was because I said something the wrong way or laid on the clean sheets with a sweaty body. The ick came about when I realized at 40 years old that this has always been the pattern in my relationships with women and it has everything to do with how my mom treated me. She had her own massive trauma from being horribly abused as a child but used that as a shield to use me as her emotional and physical punching bag when she was in a bad mood. You're not being abused. I was abused. Was a line I heard constantly as she beat me on a regular basis. Once I saw that for what it was, it disgusted me. But it also changed how I handle relationships now. And now I'm happily married for two years to a wonderful woman who never does that to me. Went on a date with a guy I met at a party. He made me prove that I liked Lord of the Rings by answering who said what when he quoted someone. He pulled out a notebook of really poorly drawn anime characters and asked me if he could draw me. He was a lot shorter than me and asked if it bothered me. I said no. Then he said, good, I like Amazonian goddesses. He kept trying to put his jewelry onto me despite my protests. He asked what I wanted to order for food, then ignored me and ordered me something else and got frustrated I didn't eat it all. He referenced being arrested, made me guess what for, and when I refused to guess for not knowing him well enough, he said GBH. He was a trainee doctor and asked if I'd ever broken any bones. When I replied yes, he said that he was going to look up my x-rays and the icing on the cake. When I wanted to leave, he got my knee-high boots, slipped them onto my feet, and zipped them up and said, You should always be treated like a goddess. My Morticia Adams. All one date. He chewed food with his mouth open, and it sounded like 1,000 octopuses being thrown at and snatched off a glass wall. 
maybe not instantly killed, but a really lovely woman telling me in a sincere voice that she loved me. Three, four hours after meeting her freaked me the fuck out in a way that I guess could reasonably be described as the ick. In no way was the statement couched either, just straight up, I love you. Think I responded, no, you don't. Got wasted at movies. Got mad, I wouldn't let her drink hike walking around the mall. At movies, she was audibly biting her nails and spitting them out, kicking person's seat in front of us. There was almost a fight about it. Said I had to get the fuck out of here, dropped her ass off at home, invited me in, kept calling me her exe's name. I simply closed the door and never looked back. Somehow, I'm an asshole though. They invited me over for dinner, and to clean the table, they just slung the food off the plates across the kitchen floor for the pack of dogs they had to fight over. She wanted me to only call her the name of her high school bully, who was Guy, that she said she couldn't stand repeatedly. Too much to unpack. Not a serious relationship, but a casual hookup. We only knew each other for about four months, and he shit his pants twice in that time period. The first time I was like, okay, people get sick and things happen, and try to let it go, but the second time, he texted me to tell me about it and said it happened as he was walking out of the bathroom. It never happened around me, but he would tell me about it and also bring it up in front of my friends. He thought it was very funny and normal for a grown man to do. He also once farted during sex, which I ignored because things happen, but then proceeded to bring it up right after and wouldn't let the conversation go. He was proud of it. There were so many other issues with him that were red flags, but that was enough for me to nope out. She started trauma dumping on me. And after telling her multiple times that I wasn't comfortable talking about this in an extremely public place with kids around, she just kept going. She went into extreme detail too, showing me pictures and stuff. When I mentioned getting therapy, she said that she didn't want to change. Hard pass. He talked in baby voice 70% of the time and only masturbated via giving his dick a bunch of small smacks over and over until he came. Making spills, messes, and leaving it for long periods of time without cleaning it up. Like months. Funkhouse stepped into a smell that I can't describe it. George Clinton would complain about it. Then, as I was sitting on the couch, noticed gnats everywhere. Looked over at a window and there were thousands living and dead in the sill. Tried to throw away a soda bottle. Hundreds more swarmed up from the pile of dirty dishes in the sink. That was enough for me. Yeah, I went on a date with a girl who seemed perfectly fine. She was really nice and made interesting conversation, clearly cared and put effort in the date. But then halfway through, she gets a call on her Bluetooth headset, which I hadn't even noticed beneath her hair. I don't know why, but it turned me off so quick. It was a co-worker calling, and she started discussing some clearly stressful topic. Planning a meeting or something. They got to near arguing and she kept rolling her eyes and sort of half winking at me every time the co-worker said something that annoyed her. She ended up saying she had just seen a car crash and she had to run, which weirdly got me back into her a bit since that's a slick move. But then immediately called another co-worker to complain about the first one and kept winking at me. This was all on a Saturday morning by the way. One of the weirdest dates I've ever been on. When I was in my senior year of high school, the son of one of my mom's work friends, who was my age, was into me. I wasn't as into him, but he seemed nice enough, and I went out on a single date with him. The reason there was no second date? He kept trying to find out if I was still a virgin or not. His reasoning was that if I wasn't, then it wouldn't matter if we fucked on the first date. And if I was, he would work for it. I didn't tell him one way or another, because it was none of his goddamned business and his reasoning was utterly pathetic. Never spoke to him again after I called a cab and went home. I went on a date with a seemingly nice guy in my early 20s. It went well, so after dinner, we cuddled in the back seat of his car in a quiet country area listening to music. He gently played with my hand and fingers and gave me a little massage, so relaxing. When he got to my wrist, he looked at it, flipped it around a few times, and says in a lustful voice, it would be so easy for me to break this little thing right now. I was on a date with a dude, and we were double dating with my best friend and her boyfriend. I had to work that night at 11. So around 10 I mentioned I needed to be taken back to my car. He acted all cute, trying to get me to call in and continue the date. And finally I was like, seriously, please, I have to get going. 
Then he got a little mad and said, Why? You're just a waitress. That has stuck with me ever since. I'm not just anything, and neither were the people at my job waiting for me to arrive so they could go home. I'd been seeing them mostly in public, we'd met on an app, and I was still figuring out if we fit for over a month, and they were pressing for more time together. A deeper connection, exclusivity, when they asked to rain check a proposed date activity because they needed to take their daughters to the dentist that day. Kids? We've been talking for hours on marathon dates and texting whenever we weren't together for like seven and a half weeks. What kids? You have kids? Kids are not a deal breaker. Hiding your three children from someone you've asked for a commitment is a massive deal breaker. She'd never changed her bed sheets in the year she'd been at her apartment, and the previously gray carpet had heavy brown track marks. They shouted at and insulted their child, 